Let's talk about rebuild versus retool. We have reported, and my reporting has not changed, this team is going to significantly alter this roster. Does that mean that they're going to trade everybody but Donovan? No. As I've said a hundred times, my guess is that you're going to have between two and three new starters on this team, and they are going to do everything they can do to trade Rudy Gobert this offseason. Facts. And when we talk about what that means for this all-star game thing, from what I understand, what, what my sources at the Utah Jazz tell me is that, yeah, they would like to have a significant presence in the all-star game, but they are singularly focused on doing everything they can do to win a championship. So let's say they trade Rudy Gobert. Okay, that means you have one guy. Well, the rumor is that they want multiple guys, that specifically Ryan Smith, the owner of the Utah Jazz, wants multiple Utah Jazz men in the All-Star game. From what I understand, that's not necessarily the truth. That's not accurate. They would like to have a good presence in the All-Star game, but they are not going to keep guys just because they think they can make them (laughs) All-Stars. Because I think the other conversation I had yesterday that was so interesting was on Mike Conley. And the fact that the Jazz recognize that Mike Conley is likely not a guy that they can count on to be a cornerstone of this team in the, the, the next three years. And I think they know that he has likely hit his ceiling and is, is even more directly on the way down in his playing career than he is on the way up. But they owe him something like $40 million here. He's, I mean, the guy's making 21 and a half per season, Yeah. right? Mike Conley's no longer an all-star. Mike Conley arguably has never been an all-star. Mike Conley is a very good player. But now you're in a position where you overpaid him for a long amount of time. Does he have trade value? You look at the obvious elephants in the room, and it's it's Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. Like, are you going to wind up trading one of those guys? And from what I've been told since December when we first reported it, Donovan Mitchell and Ryan Smith have had consistent conversations and dialogues that this team will be remade around Donovan Mitchell because it is currently constituted to, to feed everything to Rudy Gobert. And it has been a painful one. And so if you're if you're putting a gun to my head and saying, hey, who's it going to be? My guess is that you're going to see Royce, Boyan, and Mike Conley traded. And I think they're going to do everything they can do to trade Rudy Gobert. But to to answer the question directly, I think if, if you trade those guys, what are you getting in return? Mm-hmm. And what I think they want if they trade Rudy Gobert is they want an all-star in return. Whether the all-star game is here or not, I'm telling you, if you're going to trade Rudy Gobert, you need to get an all-star in return. And so when we talk about having multiple players in the all-star game, I do think that would be a luxury. And I do think that's possible by trading Rudy Gobert. Because, by the way, the other thing here is, I don't think Rudy Gobert is a shoe in to be an all-star this coming season. I truly do not. I think the jury is out on whether Rudy Gobert um, can be an an all-star when you have situations like the Clippers series, when you have situations like the Dallas series, when you have consistent moments where the Jazz haven't figured out how to how to protect Rudy defensively. Mm-hmm. So I think it makes it very difficult for guys around the league and fans around the league, especially with all the, the, the negative media pr- uh, coverage that Rudy's gotten for his play. I think it's very difficult to assume that Rudy Gobert will be an all-star next year. Now, is the, is the center position in the West stacked? No, it's not. Is he almost a default at, at, at the position? Yeah, he is. And by the way, he's an elite defender. So it, it's not that he's not capable. I just think it's going to be very difficult. If this team does not come out and does not win, I think it's going to be very difficult, and I don't care who it is, to put multiple players in the All-Star game, even if it is here. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean that guys like Boyan, if he's still here, let's say, or Jordan Clarkson – can't be in the three-point competition. That doesn't mean that Donovan Mitchell won't be in the game. That doesn't mean that, you know, the Rising Stars game can't have Jared Butler in it. But it's going to be very difficult to have multiple guys play in the NBA All-Star game, in my opinion, no matter what you do. Because I also don't think Donovan Mitchell's a lock to be in that game. You're going to have a Utah Jazz man on that roster. That's going to happen. Just because the game's in Salt Lake City. But are you going to get two guys? Are you going to get... Are you going to get one guy as a starter? Are, are Donovan or Rudy a starter in the NBA All-Star game? Tend to think they're not. So it's going to be very difficult to, to meet that bar, Jake. 
Yeah, I, I think that, you know, this this whole thing about, hey, well, they're more concerned about getting guys in the All-Star game than, than putting together a championship team is ridiculous. I mean, I, I think that the All-Star game is, yeah, cool, it's in Salt Lake City and you'd like to have nice representation, but I, I would be surprised if that had anything to do with <laughs> the their decision-making or, or how they're going about building the roster. I do agree with what you were saying, that – if you're going to trade Rudy, just logically speaking, you have to get an all-star back. I mean, he he's an all-star level player. I mean, that's just that's just NBA culture. That's NBA business. So, yeah, I, I think as far as this whole concept about rebuild or retool, I mean, they're definitely going to trend towards retool. You're not going to see, a, hey, fire sell every player and then let's suck for five years. That's not going to happen. But I think that one of the biggest mistakes that was made this past season is the expectation of having a championship team when you didn't have a championship roster. And that's the thing that I think needs to be corrected within the fan base and in the media. I mean, you have, you have like when the season ended, you have people who cover this team every day writing about how the expectation was to win a championship. And I just don't know where that came from, you know? And so to me, if, if I'm the Jazz, I'm trying to put together a roster that can contend for a Western Conference championship. That's what I'm looking for. Not the NBA Finals. I'm trying to put together a team and a roster that can consistently get to the, the Western Conference Finals. And then, hey, if that team gels together and, and they come together the way, let's say, the Boston Celtics have over the last several seasons, and then you start pushing towards you know the NBA Finals, great. But if I was rebuilding this roster, retooling this roster, that is conceptually what I'd be trying to do. I need to move... I need to move the core of this team off the roster, and I need to bring a breath of fresh air in. I need new energy. I need to get a bit younger. I need I need more athleticism. The good news is athleticism is falling off of trees in the NBA. Every team has a ton of athleticism. So when you're trading, theoretically, it's going to be difficult for you not to get athleticism back. But I just think, you know, this the rumor mill, all this stuff about the All-Star game, hell, all this stuff about trading Don to the Knicks and to the Heat and, oh, my God, the Knicks were at this game and X, Y, and Z. Like, all of that stuff is just conjecture. I And, and I understand why you guys sit us up about, like, hey, is this true? Did you hear that? Did you hear this? What's true is what we've told you so far, honestly. Like, like what we've reported about their plans and the fact that they're not trading Don, Donovan Mitchell and Don hasn't asked for a trade. Like, the, the, the him or me thing with Rudy we told you wasn't true. Like, all of those things are true. You can believe those things. And, again, I want to point out with the Rudy Gobert, him or me thing, his agent told us directly that was not the, the case. Yeah. His, we spoke directly to, I spoke directly to Rudy Gobert's agent, who told me that did not come from him or Rudy Gobert. And he was unequivocal about it. And, again, I just don't think that's the kind of player that Rudy's been or the kind of professional he's been. Um, and what I've heard is that Rudy Gobert and the Jazz have an ongoing conversation. They have an ongoing dialogue. And Rudy Gobert has told the Jazz that he would be open to a, a trade. He's not demanding a trade. He's not telling them they absolutely have to trade me. I will not be here. He has told them that he would be open to a trade and that he is frustrated that he is a scapegoat on defense and that he is not somebody that, that is featured in their offense. And I think the Jazz have been, from what I understand, the Jazz have been very candid with Rudy that there needs to be, if he wants to be a centerpiece of their offense, that there needs to be significant development in the offseason, and he needs to be able to play with his back to the basket. And I just don't think they're going to wait that out. Yeah. I don't think that the Jazz are going to sit here and say, okay, well, our plan is to make Rudy Gobert a focal point of the offense. Because, by the way, that still doesn't solve your biggest problem, which is Rudy Gobert is, and what's the right way to say this? Rudy Gobert gets exposed when he is asked to play perimeter defense one on one with a, an athletic wing player. And that's why I say, like, athleticism in the league is everywhere. I mean, it's it's going to be hard for you not to get it. And but that's why I also think you're. It's going to be tough for the Jazz to try to make. You know, let's just surmise a, a Rudy trade to the Raptors without including. You know, uh, uh, you know, a Royce or a Bogey or something. You're gonna have to package players to ship him out, or it's gonna have to be a three teamer, you know, or both, you know. So that's why I say like this isn't gonna be some simple process. Like, oh, the Jazz are the Jazz are trading him to Dallas, and and we got you know Tim Hardaway back. That's not how it works. That's it's just not gonna be that simple. So 
Yeah, I, I and, and the other thing too, I think that might get you know mischaracterized with Rudy is I don't think he's even asking to be a focal point. I don't think he's saying I need the ball every time down. But what I do think Rudy wants is to be you know just more involved in in getting lobs and getting opportunities to score. That's what that's what I think he wants, and that's what's not present right now. And I think there are other teams in the league who could give that to him. And to that, I say ship his ass out. Get the players back. Move on. Because ultimately, that's what has to happen this offseason. Regardless of the All-Star game or whether Knicks executives are sitting at, at, at round one with Dallas and Utah, like it doesn't matter, man. You need to move on from this core group of players. And whatever comes back, it needs to work to the a playoff standard. But there also needs to be a conversation here about Rudy Gobert. And really, uh, you know, like there was a big debate this morning on Mike Conley. And, you know, I actually really, I really, I enjoy a lot of jazz blogs. And um, <clears throat> I happen to read SLC Dunk occasionally. It's not something I read all the time, um, but Calvin Chappelle, 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 I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong, Calvin. I don't even know that he watches the show, but he was tweeting about the disrespect of Mike Conley. He said, jazz fans completely turned on Mike Conley. Um, jazz fans completely turning on Mike Conley is so frustrating, predictable, but frustrating. He's been a top 30 player while in Utah, had two great postseasons. Last postseason, the Clipper postseason was not a great postseason for Mike Conley. It just was not. Sorry. You were not available against the Clippers. Yeah. That was not a great postseason. Um, he had two great postseasons. It was a perfect fit with our two stars. Then he has one bad series, and everyone's sure he's a waste of money. Now, I understand a lot of that was to get attention and interaction and totally understand that. It's one of the poorest tweets about the jazz that I've seen in some time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know Calvin's work a little bit and I think Calvin, you're better than that. And the, the, this goes directly to the Rudy Gobert conversation. Yeah. At some point you're going to have to learn to tell the truth and you're going to have to learn to take your emotion and your fandom out of it. Because if you are going to sit here and say that Mike Conley has had two great postseasons. I am not sure what Mike Conley you're referring to because Mike Conley, since the day he got to Salt Lake City, has been injured. He is not somebody you've been able to count on, and particularly in this Dallas series and really throughout most of the second half of last season, the guy could not finish in the paint, was an inconsistent three-point shooter, was not good defensively, and he looked slow. Yeah. So – if you're unwilling to tell the truth about Mike Conley, if you are unwilling, like, and I want to mention one guy specifically on Twitter, um, Calvin Howard Gross says, shocker, another video expressing negativity about Rudy. Let me ask you something. Why are you here? What do you, when you come to this show every day, what is the expectation? What value does this show provide to you? Because there's a reason that we, we routinely on a daily basis do about 3,000 views per show. And that's our number. Do about 3,000 views a show. We do generally, you know, you, you guys do a great job supporting our audio podcast. We do about 10,000 a day, right? So if we're doing all of that, you're here for a reason. Because we tell you the truth. Your expectation should be unemotional, unbiased, truth-telling about the Utah Jazz. Thanks. And really anything we talk about. The truth about the Utah Jazz is this roster is broken. They likely need four new starters. They likely need five new bench players. That's nine players out of 15 on an NBA roster. You've consistently made bad decisions on contracts. Rudy Gobert won. Mike Conley, too. The initial Mike Conley trade was not the end of the world. It, it was not, I think, largely, I think Mike is who he'd always been. He is the same Memphis guy that he has been for a bit of his time here in Salt Lake. I think Father Time is undefeated and has caught up to Mike Conley. But if you're unwilling to tell the truth about these guys, you're going to continue to make the same mistakes. If Ryan Smith is unwilling to be, to be you know, to be brutally honest 
about these guys on this roster. He's no better than Gail Miller ever was. If Ryan Smith is in, again, I want to make this clear. I was told yesterday specifically, <laughs> one of the jazz guys that I talked to on a regular basis texted me out of the blue. Like I was working yesterday, was not on jazz, was not thinking about it, hadn't reached out to him. They texted. This guy texted me out of the blue in frustration about one of the national guys writing a story that he said was a complete joke. It's embarrassing. And I don't disagree with that. There is, from what I'm told anyways, there is not an emphasis to have multiple players in the All-Star game instead of winning a championship. And just, just pause right there. That concept. Like, let's say it again. The story, the rumor mill, is that the Jazz are, are sort of... I mean, obsessed might be a strong word, right? But or, or focused. The Jazz are focused on having multiple guys in the All-Star game because the All-Star game is going to be at the Viv. So they want strong representation the same way Cleveland had Garland and, and all their boys in the game. The idea that you're writing stories and putting out stories that say they're more focused on the All-Star game than retooling this roster is crazy. What NBA franchise would be more focused on putting guys in the All-Star game than building a championship contender. Because I got news for you. You're not playing to get in the All-Star game. Correct. You're playing to win championships, and you weren't even close to that this year. Yeah, and I just, I believe in Ryan Smith more than that. I think that's a real question. I, I mean... If I'm being honest, the belief in Ryan Smith, because he hasn't really done anything yet. There hasn't been any kind of yeah, traction he, he yet. Has not, he has not made a significant impact on this roster. I mean, this roster largely is the same as it was the day he signed the, the papers. And the result has gone in the wrong direction. If we're being really honest, the result's gone in the wrong direction under Ryan Smith. Um, and I can tell you, and this might seem petty, and I don't know, maybe the comments will tell me I'm wrong on this, but this rebrand, this uniform, A, will you please stop believing that uniforms we saw at Ross – or at I, you know, wherever you saw these pictures, that those are the uniforms that Jazz are going to release. Because for, it's garbage. Do you really think they'd be at Ross before they released them? Even officially released images of the rebranded uniforms. Stop, stop it. Second, the uniform that leaked. I actually think that is true. I actually think that's one of the uniforms that they're working on. If if Ryan Smith gets this rebrand wrong, oh. he is in real trouble because this fan base is unforgiving. This fan base, and again, just being brutally honest, and if you think about the, the fans that I've been around, whether that's San Francisco slash Golden State, Los Angeles uh, with the Lakers and the Clippers, Chicago with the Bulls, like Phoenix with the Suns, there is no fan base that is quick to anger and quick to to ride the emotional roller coaster as this Utah Jazz fan base is. And what I'm telling you directly is if he gets this rebrand with these uniforms wrong and they are awful, god-awful uniforms, he's in real trouble. This is a code 10 aboard. He will lose a significant number of fans due to these uniforms. He will. Because fans will not buy those uniforms. Yeah, and I think the uniform package now is pretty damn good. I mean, I think it's not it's not terrible, right? But and I know I know we've talked about this uniform at length. Yeah. But I'm just gonna say it again. Are the Lakers going out of left field with their uniforms? No. Are the are the Knicks? Are the Celtics? But I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to take to compare the Jazz to those teams. But with their all due uniform respect. is classic and lasting. But I think what you're seeing in the league, though, and I don't disagree with that, but what you're seeing in the league is like you're seeing the Nets or like, you know, Toronto did it or the Clippers but, did but, it. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, stop. Na look at the three teams you just yeah, mentioned. They're not winners. The Brooklyn is an expansion, essentially. The Nets have always been crap. Yeah. They were in New Jersey. Now they're in Brooklyn, and their uniforms are trash. And you for still the most haven't part. won anything, and you got right? the best guy in but, the league. But look at the Toronto Raptors. Mm -hmm. The Toronto Raptors were a cartoon character when they first came out. You know, you look at teams. Who's got the best uniform in the NBA? Well, bad news, Jazz fan. It's the Lakers and the Celtics and then arguably the Knicks. The Bulls? Nah. I, I mean, I love the Bulls uniform, but it's, I mean, the, the, the Knicks, Celtics, and Lakers, the Sixers, 
Like those are classic, timeless uniforms. Yeah. The Utah Jazz the Blazers. had a clean yeah. uniform. And the light, the baby blue uniforms, the AK-47 uniforms are the Carlos Boozer blue. Like, fuck off. Those were terrible. Mm-hmm. Why is this so difficult? Keep the city edition. Don't ever bring back that yellow uniform, please. That gold yellow. That, if you want to do a black and white uniform, I'm okay with that. Twice a year. Yeah. I'm okay with that. But this uniform, the Utah Jazz need to chase the Yankees. They need to chase the Lakers. Have the note. Yeah. Have the classic uniform. It's beautiful. Purple, yellow, green, over white. That's your uniform. Man, it ain't rocket science. Why why, why on earth would that not be your foundation? And then if you want to get off the reservation and do whatever it is these god-awful uniforms that leaked are, Okay, do that twice a year. But are you really going to get rid of these city uniforms that you have that people love? Yeah. Why is that not your alternate on a regular basis? It could be, but you're going to retool. Now, I understand why they want to do a rebrand. It makes them millions and millions and millions of dollars. It makes them a ton of money. But this ain't it. And my question is, and I think this is, we've, We've asked this question multiple times. How big are Ryan Smith's balls? (laughs) And and I'm not even joking. How much courage do you really have, Ryan Smith? Because if you do what you're convicted doing, which is if you truly love this uniform and you release that uniform, my man, stand by it. Do not cave. Do not do another uniform release next year. Stand by it. All I have in this world is my balls and my word. That you uni- don't break them mm, for no. Well, man, that uniform's not good. No, no. Black and, and the practice facility is already black and white. Like, well, like the practice facility. Okay, that's the practice facility. The fans, they don't really, they don't really got much to do with that. This team should always be purple, yellow. Even the blue uniform, gold. the blue and, one. And let's call it gold. Yeah, the Navy uniform was beautiful. Yeah. Never to be seen again. Like, why? And I, I'm not trying to make some big deal out of this uniform or this rebrand. Ryan Smith is at a critical moment in time as the owner of this team. Because he hasn't had a lot of wins. What wins have we really had since he, he put pen to paper? Honest to God, since he took over this franchise, you have not seen winning on the court. You have your head coach who, I don't even know what you say about where Quinn Snyder's at, because they they are desperate to keep him. Your two-star pl- like, this is a freaking disaster. Yeah. And why is it? Because there's a vacuum of leadership. And if you take this offseason and you act, and you act aggressively, and you step in and you make changes that you're convinced of, that's leadership. If you make changes and you lose and you say, this is on me, this is what I thought we should be doing, I was wrong, okay, great. If you make those changes and you win, even better. But you better be a leader, Ryan Smith, because this isn't on Danny Ainge or Justin Zanuck. It's not on your players, it's on you. You're a tech billionaire and a local guy who went to BYU. You know, like, like, yeah, cougar up, bro. That's all well and good, but you probably should win games on the way to cougaring up. Right? Like, it's cool that Ryan Smith is a billionaire and he's got a beautiful family and he's a local guy and it's a great story. But now it's time to actually do something. Come on, let's go, Schlepprock. So, just to surmise... I think this team is not trading Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. I think they would like to trade Rudy Gobert. And I think you're going to have a minimum of two to three new starters on this team. And my guess is you'll have six or seven new faces next season. Yeah. Is that a rebuild or a retool? Call what you want. Are they going to try and put multiple guys in the all-star game? Sure. But Ryan Smith, if you're valuing, and I'm told he's not, but if you're valuing the all-star game over winning a championship, I'm incredibly disappointed in you. 
because that's not the way you do business. Yeah. That's not the way you win. All right, let's talk to you, the fan, the voice of the fan. Um, wow. YouTube is asking me if I want to ban James Knight. James, I don't know what you said. I I don't know, and I can, I can show it. Oh, James. Well, I'm not going to ban you. I'm going to say no to that. But, James, that's not. The comment section on this show tends to be lively, but we don't make, yeah, like, yeah, we don't, James, I'm not even going to get into it. I don't want to make you look like an idiot. James, what the comment that, that got filtered deserved to be filtered. That's crazy. Now, I don't mean to like, now I'm cock teasing everybody. I don't mean yeah. to do that, but. Uh, Dane says, good morning, Greg, again, good to see you. Cody Strickland says, the sperm bar is good from what I hear. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. It, we're three comments in, and we're getting sperm references already. Eric and Raleigh, Rudy Sanchez, what's up? Uh, Eric and Raleigh says Warriors checked out midway through the second quarter. The officiating in that game was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> and Memphis was just better. Uh, Tao Unga says, "What's up, smart fellas? How are you?" Zach Bourne, what's up with you? He says, "What do you guys think about the Heat? I feel like they developed guys the way that the Jazz think they do, or at least say they do. I mean, Tyler Hero is the sixth man of the year." Um, I think the Heat are, are a team that, that are coached by a guy who's done a lot of winning in his career, you know, and, and I think that Eric Spolstra knows how to put knows how to put together culture that puts guys in a position to be successful, and that's why you consistently see them struggle earlier in the year, and then they come together as a team, and they go on long runs. And Jimmy Butler's changed his attitude. Jimmy Butler has become a team guy. And, oh, by the way, he's also very good. Yeah. He's a very good player. Uh, Big Dog O-Town, what's up? He says, what's up, fellas? Best podcast in the Beehive, top of the morning. To y'all, Heat Warriors and Mamba. Heat Warriors in the NBA Finals, in my opinion. Boy, the Boston Celtics gave away a trip listen, to the Eastern Conference Finals last night. Listen, the, the true NBA Finals are going to be Suns Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. That's the series that I'm just incredibly I want excited it. about. I want it. I want it desperately. Uh, Eric and Raleigh says, Warriors are going to struggle to get past the Suns, assuming the Suns beat the Mavs. Yeah. I've come around to this. Fans no longer care about winning. They only care about drama and knowing the players from year to year. That could be. Well, I, that think, could I be. think, you know, and, and it's I don't, I don't say this from a place where I'm trying to hate on people, but I do think that, you know, you're not super far off with that. Like, I do think that your average, because think about who your your average Jazz fan is. This is somebody who... It's just like us. Like, hey, you've got a 9 to 5. You're not covering the team every day. You tune into the show and get what we have, and then you probably listen to the radio or, or you know, you look at your blogs or whatever. You're just kind of reading the tea leaves, right? And and I think when that happens for fans, you start to kind of put dots together that aren't necessarily true, which is why you get the, the him or me thing last week or you get the, oh, my God, the Knicks sat at a game. That means Don's going to be a Nick in two years thing or whatever, you know, like – that's what happens. So I just think that you have to kind of slow your roll on stuff and really take a step back and think, okay, what does this really mean? Logically speaking, what what's really happening here? What's really hood, bro? Yeah, you know, like, come on. What I'm telling you is that who's the, the Jazz are a passionate fan base. But, man, you just got to take your emotions out of it on this stuff. Do you want to win or not? I mean, yeah. that's. Do you want to do you want to be good fellas? These are our boys. <laughs> or do you want to win? Cuz if you want to win, you're going to be unemotional about players and you're going to realize that they come and go. Yep. And Gordon Hayward's not an asshole who left you high and dry. Yeah. He did what was best for him and he did the exact same thing you'd have done. And you should do what's best for you. Yeah, no doubt. Gabe Ledley, what's up my friend? Good to see you. Jeremy Bolton says, uh, just bring in Giannis. Simple. I agree. Yeah. Um, Rudy is going to dunk on skip. LOL. James Knight says, oh, don't disagree man. with that. Then you're, then you're next Monty. Yeah, I could be. Yeah. I, 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 you know what? But the truth is if I was guarding Rudy Gobert, I'd lock his ass up. Catch me outside. How about that? Eric and Raleigh says Conley is virtually <laughs> untradeable because of his contract. I don't disagree. Brandon Whitesides. What's up? He says, how do you build around Mitchell if he can't defend? Well, he's also 25 years old, and he's going to be a capable defender in the next two seasons. Yeah, and I, and I think so. That's a that's a fair question. I don't think it that's, is a fair. I, question. I don't think that that's an outlandish question. I do think that's a fair question, and I think that you see, like, if you take so we're talking Don, 
Let's put him to the side for one second and compare him to a couple other guys. So, obviously, Devin Booker is the closest comparison. We do that all the time. But I think if you compare him to, you know, a Jason Tatum, you compare him to Trey Young. Like, I think Trey Young is a really close comparison in that Trey Young doesn't play defense. Trey Young has done no winning in his career yet. And Trey Young hasn't shown up in 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 the biggest games when but they're about to be eliminated. But he put 50 up at the Garden in a playoff game. And so that's what – but that's my point. So that's what people think about. Oh, man, this guy – this guy was the villain against the Knicks. Hey, by the way, we're talking about the Knicks. You know that, right? Right, but I also think that you have to look at Donovan really bluntly. Mm-hmm. And you have to – and I don't know that Donovan looks at himself, honestly. I have no idea, frankly. He's a very private individual. Yeah. Donovan has yeah. to trust his teammates more. And this is, again, I think we've talked about this multiple times. I just don't think he trusts the guys that are around him. And I think that you have to, if you're the Utah Jazz, one, I think you have to bring Eric Pascal back. Um, two, I think you have to get guys that he he will trust and integrate. Because if he's not going to bring guys into the offense, it, it, I got news for Donovan Mitchell. You're, this hero ball shit's got to stop because yeah. it's killing this team. Yeah. It, do, it, if you look at the way that Donovan fits into Quinn's offense, he does it when he doesn't move the ball. I mean, he's got to distribute and get other guys involved. The turnovers in the paint have to stop. If Donovan's biggest problem was his defense, we would all be in a much better place. But the biggest problem likely is he won't pass and he turns the ball over in the paint too much. Yeah, and I think they got to get someone who's as good or better than him. Like, I think that's, I think that's you do. the mission. I think you do. And I think, I think the other part of this is this is why the Spencer Dinwiddies of the world hurt you. Just a ball breaker not, not, not to get him. Not getting Spencer Dinwiddie, Damn. not not getting um, other guys to help him at the deadline is, I think, why Quinn is frustrated. I think when you look at, and to the rest of Brandon Whiteside's comment, he says, if you can't defend, you need someone who defends like Rudy. The problem is, no, absolutely, positively, you don't need somebody that defends like Rudy. Look, Rudy Gobert is, is an odd fit in anybody's lineup. Because he only can defend the rim. Yeah. He only defends the paint. He cannot defend the perimeter. He cannot defend the mid-range. Will not. At least has not shown the willingness to defend the mid-range. I don't need guys who defend like Rudy. I need Rudy to defend like other guys. I need Rudy Gobert to work on his footwork and his athleticism. I need Rudy Gobert. Frankly, I need Rudy Gobert to work on his flexibility so that he can move well. I, I, Rudy needs to be a better perimeter defender. That's what today's game calls for. And frankly, when you look at Donovan Mitchell, I also think in Brandon's comment, he says, also heard takes that Mitchell is more like C.J. McCallum than a superstar. I totally disagree with that. We have no idea what Donovan Mitchell's top end is because he doesn't have anybody that can help him get there. Yeah. He doesn't have... C.J. had Dame. Yeah, you, you don't have... Like, you know C.J. McCallum's top end is second or third guy offensively. That's his top end. Why did he make New Orleans exponentially better? Because he got more from Brandon Ingram. That's why C.J. McCallum was so impactful in New Orleans because he brought the best of Brandon Ingram out in key moments. But you never saw what Zion Williamson was with C.J. McCallum because they didn't want to play him. Yeah. With Donovan Mitchell, you don't know what his top end is because he doesn't have anybody that's a go-to. Who on this team... This past season, because I think Donovan was a better offensive machine this past season than he had ever been. But why did he hit the wall this year? Well, because he doesn't have... Mike Conley had a dreadful season. A dreadful season. That teardrop push shot didn't go in. Yeah. This team... Which is kind of nuts. This team was largely... Well, it is kind of nuts. But this team was largely a team that was a three and no D team. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's after, crazy. That's crazy. After the All-Star break, if they didn't make threes, they weren't winning games. Yeah. And you saw in the playoffs, all of a sudden against Dallas, they wanted to be a team that went to the rim. Well, guess what? You can't change your stripes like when the game's over. <laughs> like Donovan Mitchell, if we're being critical of Donovan Mitchell, if we're telling the truth on Donovan Mitchell, Don's got to have better footwork and he's got to become an elite mid-range player. Yeah. Because when you do those two things, you become – a better defender. And why is that? Because to be an elite mid-range player, you have to have fantastic footwork. To be a better defender, you have to have fantastic footwork. Yeah. His but Donovan Mitchell's biggest issue is there's a perception he's lost athleticism. Well, I'm telling you, he hasn't lost athleticism. He just simply has 
has lost opportunity because he doesn't believe in the guys around him. That's the issue. I'm also telling you, if Donovan Mitchell walks away from this team or goes to the Knicks, it's not the end of the world. If, if Rudy Gobert is traded, it's not the end of the world. Everybody fixates on doomsday when you talk about moving guys out. There is no doomsday when you're talking about trading guys. It just isn't. Yeah. Because if you trade Rudy and his $41 million, you're going to allocate that money to other guys. Yeah. So I, I, you just need to relax. It, it would be beautiful in this town if we didn't talk a single word of Utah Jazz basketball for, for two weeks or even until the NBA Finals are over. Right? Let them go through their postseason process. Yeah. Let them go through their season wrap-up process. They're, they're, I mean, they're, you're looking at a process now where they're going back and they're watching their film. And they're figuring out and diagnosing and reaffirming or remaking their beliefs in what happened. Because you never truly understand what really happened when you're going through it. So that's what you're, they're doing now. Um, Joe Kerr, good morning to you. He says the Jazz are making a fatal mistake if they don't trade Rudy. I agree with that. Um, Eric and Raleigh says the Jazz need a Draymond Green type player that can fire up the team and guard bigs and wings. Yeah. You need hybrid defenders on this team. Yeah. Because that's what this league is. That's what this league You look at the Golden it's State Memphis series. Look at the Golden State Memphis series. Look at look at the Phoenix series. Phoenix Dallas. Like you, you're you're not you're playing big to a certain extent. But DeAndre Ayton's struggling because Dallas is running a lineup that requires you to move a lot on defense, and he's not a guy that moves a lot on defense. DeAndre Ayton ver versus Maxi Kleba is usually a win for Maxi Kleba. Yeah. It's just a matter of, uh, is Kleba going to make his threes? This league is not a big man's league right now. Yeah. They have value, but it's why Clint Capella was ostracized after signing a huge contract. And he's a better offensive player and, and not that far behind Rudy defensively. He's a really good shot blocker. So you just have you have issues when you have this much money allocated to a big. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Uh, George Mashika says, hello, what's up, guys? Good to see you. Eric and Raleigh, the franchise cares about hosting an all-star game because it's a prestigious event. Oh, yeah, sure. It is, and it's a money but maker But it's not for more you. important than winning a championship. No, you make more money winning rings than all-star games. Joe Kerr says, I can't be a fan of this team if this is truly their approach. If they care more about the All-Star game than a championship, they are not worthy of it. But I but I want to be really clear. We're not saying that. We're saying they care more about championships than All-Star games. Like, we're making sure we're on the same page with that. Yeah. Jeremy Bolton says, if it didn't come out from Rudy, why doesn't Rudy just come out and say that? He keeps saying a new rumor every day, then just come out and say that. Because there's no win for Rudy Gobert publicly speaking about a trade. And you just got your ass handed to you publicly by Shaq. Like, come on. Yeah, You're I still maintain that. the best thing for him to do is go on go on TNT. Go on with those guys. Uh, Gabe Levy says, the idea of prioritizing having a presence at the All-Star game over building a team that competes for a championship makes zero sense. Yeah. Yet it will find a home with delusional Jazz fans. Truth. Eric and Raleigh says, Conley has been a top 30-ish six man while in Salt Lake City. Could be. But Don't... Okay, but here's the thing. And this is what the guy on Twitter was saying. Oh, well, he's a top 30 player. Who cares if he is a top 30 player or a top 50 player? I don't care, dude. What matters is, hey, are you making your floater? Are you making your three? Are you helping us win games, or is your shot percentage trash and hurting us? Yep. Like, that's what matters. Stop. I really, one of my biggest pet peeves in NBA circles is, oh, my God, this guy has this incredible stat that means nothing to us about winning a game. Yeah. And that's what that Conley stat is. It is. Uh, Jeremy says, I'm not paying money to go see games so players can make it to the All-Star game solely. I mean, it's cool and all, but if the Jazz bring in players to win a chip, take my money. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Precisely. Um, Jeremy Bolton says, Jazz just need to stay with purple. Bring back the Purple Mountains, Greg Hawkins says. Agreed. Everybody loves the Purple Mountains. I love Mountains. that jersey. You can't do away with the Jazz note. That would be the worst. It would be. I totally agree. Wow. Comment dump. Uh, a drinking and cigar journey with Eric Lethem. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Eric, good morning. He says the Utah Jazz front office is always a half step slow to making changes to the roster every year, but this is a new front office. This is a critical summer for the Jazz. Yeah. For, for Ryan Smith and Danny Ainge, the legend needs to be built. 
because there's a lot of people who don't believe. Jackson Graham, good morning to you. He says, this team is beyond hopeless. I'd rather be bad than um, suck in the first round. Stuck in the first round limbo. Yeah, it's I agree a playoff with that. game. Yeah. And Garcia says, I'm saying who, who trusts Donovan to slow anybody down? I do. I absolutely trust Donovan. I trust Donovan to become a better defender. I trust Donovan to become an elite mid-range player. I trust Rudy Gobert to do everything that he can do to become more athletic and, and be more impactful on offense. You know, like I, I, I think as professionals, that's their, that's the low bar yeah. for Donovan Mitchell. And that's the low bar for Rudy Gobert. I mean, I, I love this idea that guys can't change, grow and become better players. Donovan Mitchell is 25 years old. Yeah. Just 25 now years old. his prime. I mean, look at the leap he took in three point shooting range. Look at the, I mean, if you look at his game, it's evolved every single year. Like, the guy is just now 25 years old. Yeah. You know, like, you, you have to have some faith that guys like Rudy and Don are going to improve. I mean, Rudy's not a spring chicken anymore. He is a... He's 30. He is he is past the... He is likely past the best growth opportunity in his career. So now everything is much more difficult for him to grow, in my opinion. Um Spencer Morgan says Mike Conley's decline really is the number one reason for the Jazz playoff failure this year. I, I totally agree with that. I think Mike Conley's inability to finish in the paint. You saw in Dallas when he was making those those push teardrop shots. Yeah. They were a much better team, a much more effective team. Well, because it's a high percentage look, you need yes. to make that. It, he it, was missing easy gimme layups. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> with all due respect to this dude on Twitter you were talking about earlier in the show, like, you can sit here and, and lean on stats, but I got news for you, man. It's a make or miss league. You either made the shot or you didn't, Boyan. You either made the shot or you didn't, Mike. You either made the shot or you didn't, Don. Like, and they missed the shots. And I'm not trying to hate on them, but but it really is that simple. Like, like you you either are going to make that teardrop or you're not going to be a successful NBA player. That's how it's always been. Look at Ja. Look at Trey Young. Hell, even look at Don. Yes. All look at Luca. All these guys have the teardrop in the bag. It is a must-have shot in today's yep. point guard bag. It, you just have to have it. Uh, I totally agree. SLCP Shooter says, uh, I'll say it again, the Conley trade was the killer. The team would have been better with Rubio, Crowder, Allen, but, 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 but. I agree with that. Conley is a nice guy who has never gotten a tech. But listen, if the issue wasn't that you made – the Conley trade. The issue is you didn't do anything beyond that. When you look at the way, like this offseason, Rudy Gay was a complete waste. I mean, Rudy yeah, Gay. Yeah, what was the point of signing Rudy Gay? Was just a complete waste. I I, I don't understand. And, the, and it. the reason, not to cut in on you, but the re, the reason we got that he didn't play was Quinn didn't like the matchups. So it's either it's either were, you know, and I don't think this is the case. But hey, he either wasn't a hundred percent and he couldn't play him. Or or you just made a bad decision in signing him and Quinn wouldn't play him because the matchup apparently didn't dictate it, even though you were trying to play small ball. That's what I don't understand. Like, you brought him here specifically to play small ball. You go to that in the Dallas series and you have some success. You could really use a, a hot shooter off the bench, and Rudy Gay had shown a propensity to be that guy. Yeah. But you don't play him. Yeah, and and that's incredibly frustrating. And I, I think the... The they have that's why I said they need they need as close to a rebuild as you're gonna get. I mean, I I I think I I would I would I would trade Rudy. I would I would have four new starters. I, I the only guys on this team that have, in my opinion, real staying power are, are Jordan Clarkson if he's willing to evolve his his mindset and Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. All the I, I mean, you look at Rudy Rudy if he is truly desired across the NBA, and I think he is by four or five teams. I would get everything you can get. If you if you said to me today that you could go back and make make the trade that lands you the Talon Horton Tuckers, that lands you the Montrez Heralds, like, yes, right now, let's do it. But that trade's not possible anymore. I would love to have seen them move, move, and this is the Joe Ingles conversation. I feel like they wasted Joe Ingles' contract. Yeah. Yeah, I just I think it was a or huge the opportunity mistake. that it presented. I, I think it was a huge mistake to just give him away. Yeah, um, and now you have Joe Ingles on Twitter saying he's coming back. By the way, so I don't know. Yeah. Hey, it is what it is. I mean, he's under he essentially is under contract, and 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 Portland has the right to match. I mean, I I just 
if you're wanting, if you're thirsty for Joe Ingles to return to the Jazz, yeah, that's where that's why this team doesn't win. It's why this team doesn't win. Um, let's see. Uh, James Knight says you're not trying to hate on them, Jake. It's just it just comes naturally. Apparently, it does because I'm not I'm not here for BS. I'm not here for for anything other than the truth. If you want BS, go to someone else's podcast. It just is what it is. Yeah. Spencer Morgan says the Conley trade was fine. They resign the the resigning of Conley was the mistake. And Rudy Gay in a milk carton is a mystery, and we haven't had an answer about it at all. I agree. I. The Completely. Jazz are very media savvy. And you know what it also says to me? It also says to me that that Quinn and this this particular iteration of the front office is not on the same page. Because at the deadline, you went and got guys that did, like Nikhil Alexander-Walker did nothing for you. That was a complete waste. The acquisition of Rudy Gay, like if you're going to go and acquire Rudy Gay, I would think that you would have a conversation with your head coach about playing him specifically when you can forecast, hey, we're probably going to see either Dallas or Memphis or whatever, yeah. whatever teams, you know, whatever three teams we're probably going to see. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I I agree with that's that. That's why I three say, like, to, yeah, I think that's very interesting. This offseason, Quinn in the front office, like this whole Quinn dynamic is super important because yes, it not, is. it's not just that, hey, you know, Quinn's thinking about this or he's thinking about that. That's not really, to me anyway, the 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 core of the conversation. The core of the conversation is, does because he said in his exit interview, I enjoy my relationship with Zanuck and Danny Ainge and I respect what Ryan Smith is doing. He was very positive about those guys. But he would, again, not talk about his contract and his situation, which tells me, hey, if you're not going to come out and say, yeah, I'm committed to this organization long term, we got some stuff to figure out this offseason, but I'm confident in it. Like, if you're not going to say that, then that's going to, you know, force me to wonder, okay, what do you need to see this offseason to come back? Yeah, Trent says, how confident are you guys that you're right about Quinn's contract? Does he have a year plus an option? I, I was told that directly in March. Yeah. That Quinn Snyder has one year and an option on his contract. Yeah. So, and it's, I believe it's his option. Mm -hmm. Um, So Quinn Snyder's under contract for this coming season. Andy has an option. But listen, but listen, let's not, let's not beat around the bush. The Jazz and Quinn are not going to do this whole thing where the Jazz bring in all these guys and change the roster and everything just to have Quinn leave in a year. No. Like, if Quinn's going to leave, it would have already happened, in my opinion. So that's why I say I don't think yeah, he's, he's leaving. he's not going to leave guys twisting. I, yeah, I agree. like, that's just not who Quinn J- Snyder is. Jared Tanner says, THT, you mean Talon Horton Tucker? Mm-hmm. Uh, was terrible this season. Who are you watching? And Montrez got played off the floor in the playoffs. Well, ask yourself this, though. This is a matchup league. There's no doubt about this. Yeah. Specifically, Talon Horton Tucker, because I've had this conversation with 20 guys in the league in the last two months. Talon Horton Tucker suffered in the make of that roster in L.A. That guy needs a change of scenery. And what what happened to him was very simple, is he was the ninth or tenth guy on that team. But if you brought Talon Horton Tucker to Los Angeles, from Los Angeles to Utah, yeah, what does he do? By Just by sheer need alone, he is probably your, your first wing off the bench. Jordan Clarkson is... is He's your scorer off the bench. Talon Horton Tucker is so young and so pliable yeah. that he's a guy who can shoot the three, did not shoot well this year, but nobody in L.A. did. Mm-hmm. But he's got the skill set that you need. He's athletic. He's young. He can attack the basket. He's your he Jalen Brunson, three. dude. He is. That is that guy. And as far as Montrez Harrell goes, Montrez Harrell is a perfect fit to Rudy Gobert. As Rudy Gobert's number two, Montrez Harrell is a mean son of a bitch. I'd rather dude. have him than than Hassan, I can tell you that right now. Montrez Harrell brings you the Jay Crowder, the he brings you the the you know PJ Tucker. Marcus he, Smart. He brings you that that bad attitude on the floor. He wants to dunk on guys. He wants to hurt guys. He he does not care. All he wants to do is win. Yeah. And he is a more than capable defender. And you want a you want a guy to score down low for you? That's that's Montrez Harrell. He yeah. is a phenomenal role player. He is not somebody to be counted on. He is not somebody you want starting for you. When he's coming off the bench and he's your number two big, I absolutely think he's a perfect fit here. What was the problem with Hassan Whiteside? 
Emotionally, he was disconnected. He didn't want to play on some nights. He was not a willing a willing defender. He did not run back hard. But when he was plugged in, he was, a re- he was one of the best shot blockers in the NBA. But he wasn't plugged in. And he was an odd fit in the locker room. I'm telling you, Montrez Harrell is a perfect fit in this system. And you need guys. This is something else you need to, to bring yourself around to. You need the right fit here. You don't just need... And this is the Bradley Beal convert, or excuse me, the Brad Beal conversation. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. I'm for real. This is the Brad Beal conversation. Yeah. Does he fit? Does a Ben Simmons, think about Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. Does Ben Simmons fit? I think he'd be a great fit here. Was he a fit in, in Philly? He wasn't. Yeah. I mean. But would Ben Simmons be a good fit in Utah? Yeah, he would. It, well, the way he plays. On the floor, he's a fit, but the money yes. thing again is. Yeah, you know. well, finance, but but this yeah. is my point. Yeah. You need what is the problem with Rudy Gobert? Rudy Gobert's game doesn't fit in their system, and he's making a pile of money. Yeah. If his game fit, you could work around, so to speak, the money. Yeah. But it doesn't fit at all. Yeah. Right? So you look at what is the problem with Rudy Gay? Because I was I I I was one of the people who was jumping up and down when they made that signing. I thought that was a great signing. Well, he's old and he was hurt and he missed a bunch of time this year. And then he just didn't play. 